Before I get started on this, I want to really thank a lot of people, not every single person, but I got an immense number of responses into the Edmodo group, what people took their pictures of, like what they knew about surface area and volume. A lot of the things that people drew, if you did have drawings, were prisms. Prisms. We all need to start off with this so we know what we're talking about. We've looked at prisms since year seven. Would anyone like to extend? What's like a nice, succinct definition for a prism? Any takers? Give us some words. Anyone? Maybe I should ask this. Is a prism a flat shape? No. It's not. It's, it's got how many dimensions? Three. Three dimensions. So let's write that. It's a three-dimensional shape. Okay. Now we know lots of three-dimensional shapes. A sphere is a three-dimensional shape. Is a sphere a prism? Yes. Hmm. Now it's interesting, it actually has a lot of things that are quite close to being a prism, but it's not. Can someone tell me what is, what might be a prism? Can you do, yeah Ryan? A cube. A cube, a cube. Let's all draw a little cube up here. A cube is a prism. So what is it about a cube that makes it a prism and not a sphere? What's, what quality does it have? Say that again. A sphere is round. A sphere is round. Hmm. We don't like roundness when we talk about prisms. Is there anything else? Because that's true. Anything else we can identify? Yeah. What do you reckon, I get? Okay, we could talk about faces. How many faces does a cube have? Six. Does a prism have to have six faces? No. No, it can have a whole bunch of numbers of different faces. Um, so, number of faces is important, but maybe we don't need it in the definition. Yeah? Ellen, you also had your hand up again. Do you want to offer something oh, else? I was going to say faces. Yeah, okay, sure. That's fine. So, it is an obvious fact about this. Let me give you a bit of a clue. Uh, again, words. The word prism comes from a word in another language that means slice or saw, like literally cut across something, right? Does that give us any clues about this? Cross section. Oh, say that phrase again. Cross section. Cross section. Okay, you all drew that cube, right? In that cube, oops, Daisy, let's draw a cross section. It's fine. Um, <laughs> let's draw a cross section of this cube. Now you can draw lots and lots of different ones. Just for the sake of consistency, let's all draw the same one. Something like this. Okay, that's right there in the middle, of, as if I cut the thing in half. Okay? So that cross section, the special thing about a cube is that we just drew one of the cross sections, but any of the other cross sections that I drew, they would be the same. Thank you very much. Okay. So, now we have a definition. Three-dimensional shape with... The word I'm going to choose is a consistent cross-section. Okay. Let me add one more thing in brackets to this, which is that we usually state for a prism, um, the same thing we were talking about faces before and straight edges. We usually want that cross-section to be a polygon. Later on in this topic, I'm going to explain why I put this in brackets, and I don't think it's as important as the rest of the definition. Okay? So we know what a prism is, this kind of shape. What's surface area? This will be a bit quicker. It's a very simple concept. How would you define surface area? Yeah, Ryan, what do you reckon? The area that's on the surface of the shape. Nice. Okay, <laughs> just take the words, rearrange. Okay, so area is not a three-dimensional thing, right? It's not a three-dimensional thing. It's a two-dimensional thing. Right? So it's the two-dimensional space, that's what area is after all, that, now, we want to go all the way around. I guess a nice colloquial way to say it is, you've got to cover that shape, cover the prism. Okay. Okay. Now, in order to work this out, I wonder, I mean, Christmas was not that long ago. How many of you actually wrap Christmas presents rather than like handing it off to someone else? Yeah, okay, lots of you. Fantastic. I, um, I spent a lot of time wrapping Christmas presents. Once you have your object and you want to wrap it around, okay, if you did it exactly with like no overlap or anything like that, for something like this, if I took all of the two-dimensional space that covers that shape, what would it look like? What would it look like? Hmm. 
you actually have a really fancy mathematical name. It starts with an N. If you took this and you unfolded it, you would get a net. net. Yes. Very good. <laughs> now, this is not in the title, but it's just as important. A net is the result of unfolding the faces of a shape. Now, even though this wasn't in the title, can you see why it's important? You want to find the surface area of a prism that's the same as finding the area of the net. Uh, most nets for cubes look like this. You might want to draw this up next to where your cube is. Okay, most nets for a cube look like that. You can almost imagine folding that up in your head, but they don't have to be like that. There's lots of different ones. You could draw one like this as well. That will work just fine. You could do other shapes that are different as well. Okay, all of them will have the same area. They're all talking about the same shape. 